Hey everyone, welcome back to Digital Health Live at CES 2014. My name is Tim Ria, the host and producer. I want to thank Idea Life for sponsoring the show this year. Super excited to have David Shi, he's the CEO of Linear Dimension Semiconductor. Um, we had a closing keynote today, which was super cool. It's how will wearables dominate the future? So how will they dominate the future? David, you have an interesting background. Let's talk about your background first. Yeah, so my background is from the technology industry. I was the fellow who did a lot of the microchips and have been involved for 17 years, interfacing all these sensors, um, micro machines, MEMS, um, accelerometers, all the thing, the new screens and everything that are making it possible to basically turn your cell phone into a, a wearable device. Today's problem with cell phones is it's got two modes. You stick it to your ear to talk, and then if you want to type on it, you have to put it in front of you. Type on these tiny little keys you can barely see, and it's just not a good form factor. In a 10 years' time, your kids are going to look and say, you really put a piece of glass to your head and dropped it in the toilet half the time and left it behind half the time, where you know now we can wear glasses that we put in our head. We can wear you know clothing where we've sewn screens into it. We can wear patches that take our biometric information, the entire experience is going to change. And part of the reason for that is our body already tells us the types of things we're typing. The body is a password. It is a unique identifier. We can buy with it. We can gain access with it. We can have it type passwords ourselves. So using the body means we actually have to communicate some things less, but we can communicate some things a lot more. What are the advances in material sciences, battery technologies, and the, the, the building blocks that will change the future? Yeah, so there are lots of exciting developments at the moment. Um, we've seen just the start of some of the display revolution. We've seen the glass, now we're starting to see the, see the flexibles, which have been long in coming. We're going to see no power displays where only the uh, pieces of the image that change have to update, which is going to extend the battery life. We're seeing new paper battery technology that is really going to help with that. And one of the more interesting things, we're seeing new neural computing, which is actually cutting the um, power that it uses to do the computations to get your physiology out um, a lot more efficiently and a lot faster. And so we're working with partners like ARM to create these machines that actually work like your brain and are a lot more efficient than existing computers to get the information out. In terms of specific trends, um, we're soon going to see morphing materials where keys rise out of the keyboard background, where your device literally changes shape, like memory, metals. memory metals and things like that, but a lot more composites that strain. Um, and then we're going to see things like heads-up displays, both from the glass but contact lenses and things like that. We're seeing a new liquid crystal thread that'll let you sew new displays. This is really exciting. My wife said, you're never going to put a, a screen on any of my hamburgers, bags, or any of my clothes because it's too geeky. So we're going to take the geekiness out of technology by letting you sew your displays. So, so in your opinion, wearables isn't just a hype and a fad and just another excuse to sell another product? No, it's actual new technology that is being put to use and is finally small enough, low enough power, not hooked up by a wire to some big device that lets us make use of our body. If you look at the eye, the back of the eye sees that tiny focused bit of light. You don't need a big screen TV because if it's up by your eye or on a contact lens, it's as big screen as you could possibly make it. You know, our body can type passwords. How many times have you gone to your iPhone and try to type your password or gone onto your laptop and try to buy something and you're trying to remember your birthday or whatever your password might be? Well, now, just by touching a mouse or touching a keyboard, it'll just type that in. Or wearing a wristband or just wearing one of these glasses or a garment, that will just go automatically. When you go to the store, you'll be hooked to MasterCard, you'll be hooked to Visa. When you walk out of the store, it'll just do the purchase because you don't need a type of password. You don't need that long credit card number because your heart rate, your Galvani skin response, your um, fingerprints, all of these things which the wearables see are unique identifiers a lot better than any number could be. What do you have going on at Linear Dimensions right now? So Linear Dimensions is the company that does what's under the hood for all the wearables. So we do the uh, microchips, the modules, the no power displays that allow your next generation wearables to last weeks instead of days, to you know fit in a glass instead of having a big appendage tied to them, 
to let you have a mouse that you put your hand on and it continuously takes heart rate and other physiologicals to type your passwords in. So many, many companies that you see on the show floor come to us and say, look, this is some new sensor technology. We could really revolutionize what people are doing, but you know, our thing is this big. Can you get it this yeah. big and make it last this long? Well, we do that and we've done that for many, many people. So I know you know a little bit about ultrasound, visual medicine. What's your uh, outlook for the future? Yeah, so um, there's a lot of stuff happening in the medicine areas. We're seeing ultrasound miniaturized. We're seeing Doppler radar and also sound levels miniaturized. We're seeing all sorts of um, acoustic and other sensors. And we're even seeing living sensors. We've seen cardiac string, which you can put on micro needles and string them between um, the micro needles. They can actually become pumps and sensors. And so all of those sensing technologies are letting us interact both inside the body, with the body, and we're actually um, becoming part of the machine, which is ultimately what wearables are going to turn us into. I don't want to say the eventual cyborg, because that would go back to geekiness, and we're trying to take the geekiness factor out, but call it the cool living wearable cyborg kind of thing. So the last kind of question is, is we're on this innovation curve. Where are we at along the path, and what is the, when, is, when do things really get interesting? Yeah, we're very, very early. The Only a few years ago, the industry was able to um, develop the micro-machining technologies that let you do these miniature gyroscopes, miniature sensors, miniature ultrasound before they were too big. So we've only had a few years to learn how to power them, work with them. We're having a lot of problems with noise, a lot of problem with movement. When people move, the sensors don't work. And there's been a lot of computing power and new computing methods like the neural computing that have had to be developed to work with these things. Um, but over time, as we see the new morphing technologies, the new display technologies, our lives are gonna change. I mean, one idea, we had the martini patch, where a micro needle patch, which doesn't hurt, it feels like sandpaper, uses a micro MAMS pump to give you your martini and you don't have the calories associated with it. So it's gonna change our minds. We're gonna be crying over our, mart our martini patch, not our beer. <laughs> We're gonna be interacting Without worrying about passwords, we're going to be buying things without standing in long lineups. It's really going to change. And then in the healthcare, being monitored, it's going to be a lot better for prevention. And with the changes to healthcare, we're not going to get the time with our doctor. So we're going to go into pharmacies. Our wearables are going to be our, our uh, guardian angels. They're going to watch our body. They're going to know when we need to go to the doctor. They're going to get in touch with the doctor when we need to. They're going to give the type of information that's needed to really um, keep us healthy and fit. Where do people like get a visual read? Do you have a blog? How do people get in touch? Yeah, so www.lineardimensions.com is our website. Um, we are also at 25530 on the CS show floor. Um, so we would welcome you to uh, check out our website, come check our booth, and yeah. uh, we can demonstrate some of these technologies and uh, show you where we're going with wearables. Super cool, Dave. Well, I'm glad Jill Gilbert brought you down here because it's just fascinating to hear of things that are coming out of your, uh, your brain. So that's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, good luck with the rest of the show. Thanks. Thank you.